Well, hello again. Uh, this is Gene Harm, and today I'd like to talk about my saltwater fish. You may know from a previous video that my first reef aquarium was back in 1981. You couldn't purchase, you couldn't go to your local aquarium store and purchase live corals back then. So all those aquariums I had, I had collected the corals myself, as, as well as collected all my saltwater fish myself. My my saltwater fish go all the way back to collecting my own all throughout the 80s. And even though uh, in the mid 80s I, I was not keeping live corals anymore uh, because you um, weren't able to collect them legally and you weren't able to get them out of uh, aquarium stores. Every every type of Caribbean fish that you can probably think of, uh, I collected and kept. Uh, but uh, something happened in 1987 that changed all that. I got married. And, of course, uh, immediately I set up uh, saltwater tanks. And, and uh, marriage does something to you it, it takes away the freedom to go collecting like i used to collect so <laughs> my collecting now was maybe once a year or or not even but the first few years of marriage i was out buying my saltwater fish instead of collecting them and this was a different experience for me and so uh i have to tell you this because it, it, it's hard to say but it was one of the things that uh that was happening was every time uh, we had company come over and people would look at my my saltwater tank and look at the fish and say isn't it hard to do that and my wife would respond yeah he doesn't keep fish too long and the truth was I lost a lot of uh, I would buy a fish and, it, and after a while it, it, it would die for one reason or another it's heartbreaking when a when a fish dies and somebody else would come over and say, "Is oh, saltwater tank, isn't saltwater hard to do? And my wife would immediately jump up and say, and, oh, yeah, he, he, he doesn't keep fish too long. And I was like, why does she always have to say that? <laughs> you know, everything looks fine. There's, you know, no reason why these aren't going to live for quite a while. And, yeah, I was losing fish. And I was not doing the things that uh, we know to do today. In fact, <laughs> the things you take for granted today were not known back then. I mean, in the in the late 80s and early 90s, for saltwater fish keeping, the wet dry filter system was what we did. And uh, we now know that you don't want to do that. That raises nitrates up to uh, to extreme levels. But I had. Um, I, I hated the idea of sumps, and usually what they do is they had the wet-dry media, like bio balls or other kind of media, uh, uh, where you had trickled down water that came, came down from the tank, trickled down through that media, uh, was well oxygenated, and the, and the conversion uh, from the nitrogen cycle uh, would produce... Uh, ammonia to nitrites, and then nitrites to nitrates, and this would all uh, be... Um, inducive of doing so uh, but I used the bio wheel in fact I had two bio wheels that would circulate up top and uh, and and that's fine for saltwater fish but it's not fine for corals but what eventually happened was um, you know having a family and kids and I eventually gave up the saltwater fish in the, in the 90s and and uh, went and just had a freshwater tank by the way, I love freshwater. I wish I, I had the, yeah, but I, I you know, I wish I had uh, the availability to have uh, freshwater tanks and saltwater tanks and even more of them. But I only have one tank. Uh, and in fact, in some future video, I'm going to talk more about why you should have more than one tank. Uh, especially if you're reef keeping, you want to have more than one tank. But um, I actually had, uh, over the years, of had several tanks going at once but right now because I travel uh, I'm only doing one tank it's just too much for me to be come home on weekends and have to deal with more than one tank it's but on to the fish I mean so uh, I got back into the 
uh, keeping the saltwater fish again. I gave up my 55 gallon of uh, fresh water and decided to get rid of those fish and, and, and turn my 55 into... Uh, 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 I'll tell you why I did it. was uh, my brother got back into the hobby and a long time collector like myself and here in Florida and and uh, he was telling me about uh, the aquarium stores now having corals in it. Now, corals have always been my delight. I mean, it, it, as, as long, all those years of having saltwater fish, corals was always something that was in the back of my mind. I just want the fish to be with corals. I never liked having saltwater fish with just bleached corals. It's just terrible. And now this is, this has changed everything. We learned that we can keep corals, and the secrets were coming out in the 90s of what to do, and really the turn of the century, actually. <clears throat> so I, I believe it was 2004 or five or so is when I went over and, and, and started getting some corals, and I had the on top of my brother, but I had a friend uh, I discovered uh, uh, said, hey, you know, uh, such and such has uh, corals. And I went over his house and he gave me a few and I had my 55 ga gallon going with actually some of the corals we have in there today are from his tank from way back then. But, you know, I'm talking so much now that's not about fish, but it is about the fish. It's always about getting the the most enhanced colors and health of fish and when you have a reef tank and you maintain it at the water quality to keep corals you're going to have the best healthiest fish you can have provided you quarantine your fish and they're disease free uh, when they go into the main display and are also all the coral colors and live rock and stuff that they, they bring out the color of the fish the way they're supposed to be and i could tell you from collecting fish and, and and taking them off the reef knowing what color they were and how beautiful they were in the reef and then bring them in into an aquarium with bleach white coral uh the fish didn't look as vibrant for sure and so um you know I love corals, but I've I always wanted the healthiest and most vibrant fish I can have, and so, and I, I've collected here in Florida, so uh, the Caribbean fish are what I wanted, and I've had other fish, of course, I've had clownfish and dominoes and um, sailfin tangs. I love sailfin tangs and yellow tangs and and other. Uh, non-caribbean fish in my in my tanks and i eventually said you know what i really want the tank to be uh represent a specific environment a, a particular ecosystem and so i want just caribbean fish well the one of the first fish i got back in even when i had the 55 gallon before in 2005 went over and got the, the 120 that you're looking at now but even when I had the 55 gallon, I, I got this uh, cardinal, which is not a Caribbean fish. But here he is, still in my tank. He's alive. I mean, uh, I offered to give it away, and somebody said they would take it. But, you know, it's not easy to collect a fish, uh, to be honest with you. And I, I, there, I did develop a fish trap, and in another video show you how I use the fish trap. But he was only here for a few minutes. And so a fish trap wasn't an option. And, uh, there was no way I was going to be able to net them out. But on the other hand, <laughs> what can I say? This fish has been with me from the beginning. You know, uh, he gets picked on relentlessly by the rock beauty. But this, this cardinal fish, uh, he's been with me all these years. I had a yellow tang uh, that was not a Caribbean, but a Hawaiian yellow tang had him for a decade or more and he finally passed away and then uh and he and just a just a, a year or two ago uh recently he passed away so my tank almost looks empty now 
uh, without that tang swimming around. And so I do want to replace them, um, but I want to replace them with um, a blue tang, a Caribbean blue, which when they're juvenile are yellow, and that would be my delight to get a Caribbean blue, uh, a collecti, uh, uh, collect the Caribbean blue, which I've done before in the past, but uh, I do have a trip to the Keys coming up here in a few weeks, and uh, if I'm able to get one, fine. If not, I'll, I'll pick one up from the fish store. And then uh, I don't want to do that until at least I had an opportunity to collect one. The other thing is it's highly likely I'll collect a, some more angelfish. But I really don't know what to do if I do collect them. Because I don't want to be able to, I don't want to put them in this tank. I already got the rock beauty. And everybody knows angelfish are not compatible with corals. But... Uh, you can look at the Rock Beauty. Now, the Rock Beauty I got uh, right before Thanksgiving of 2013. And so he's been in there a few years now. Grown a little. And then uh, I love angelfish. And Rock, Rock Beauty is one of those fish that I do see when I'm, when I'm snorkeling and diving. Um... You don't see them often in the patch reefs. You got to go to the outer reefs, or uh, I've been able to collect them in the inlets, uh, which is deeper water. Uh, to be honest with you, but I didn't collect this one. I purchased them in. Uh, I think I purchased him in Melbourne, Florida. There's a aquarium store there uh, called Nahakis. If you're ever in Florida, in Melbourne, <laughs> you can visit Nahakis Aquarium. It's a very nice store. It's been there. Oh, it was there when I was in in the in the 1980s, uh, back when I was collecting my own stuff. Uh, uh, the Hackies was there, but uh, the Rock Beauty is uh, is my show fish actually, and uh, he's been a real a real delight. And uh, like I said, I've had him for a bit, and definitely a Caribbean angel love angel fish uh to be honest with you my favorite saltwater fish is probably the butterfly fish because there's something about the butterfly fish which i don't have any uh they're i've never been i've had lots of them and never been ever to keep them alive and i know you can and i know the secret to doing it and the secret is live black worms uh, in case you're wondering but I struggled to find live blackworms. It was something that was available on almost all the fish stores, at least back in the 1970s. Uh, I don't know. I can't find them anywhere. Uh, but um, I did purchase frozen blackworms. Uh, it's the uh, fish frenzy. So I think it's called Larry's Reef Supply. Uh, I'm surprised. I, I don't remember. But there's a frozen food. Uh, there's coral frenzy and there's fish frenzy and fish frenzy has the black worms frozen in it so I got some of that in case I catch another butterfly while I'm in the Keys because to, why are the, I like butterflies is this something about their shape and beauty that just stands out and speaks salt water you know it's amazing people come in guests will come into my home and they'll look at the tank and they'll ask me is this salt water that you don't know you don't I mean it's amazing those of us in a hobby uh, that they anybody have to ask uh, but you know people don't know but something about the salt water uh, something about the butterfly fish that to me uh, just stands out as a salt water beauty and I don't know why it's my favorite and so so at some point I'll I'll be uh, I'll meet the challenge and and be victorious and, and be able to have a butterfly fish so let's see what else do I have in this tank I have the which I believe is a blue-headed wrasse I got him uh, snorkeling in um, off a of marathon key in June of 2014 um, actually I think I was trying to collect a blue tang and end up netting this wrasse which was a brilliant yellow and if you look at any of my patch reef videos 
uh, snorkeling in the Keys, you'll see lots of these yellow wrasses. And that's him. But they school, and they're, they actually are all females. And then one of them will convert over to being a male. And then, but instead of being yellow, it looked more like this, but it have a, a, a blue head to it. So I don't know what I have, but basically it's, it's I believe he's a, I believe this fish is female. Has not got the blue coloration, but underneath the aquarium lights and the that we have here, he just doesn't have, um, she just doesn't keep that yellow. In the early morning, when the rest gets up and starts swimming for the day, she's yellow, but most of the day she looks like this and uh, just adjusting well let's go on to the royal grama the royal grama basslet these you cannot get in the florida keys they're actually caribbean fish they are caribbean fish but the specific to just about all throughout the caribbean uh, but not in the, the florida keys but it's funny how a, a Royal Grama basslet, which lives everywhere else in the Caribbean, and it's just 60 miles away from Grand Bahama to, you know, the Florida reefs, and yet that fish is not found here at all. But it's not so much of the, the fish getting here. It's very possible basslets have been able to get here through release of uh, into the environment from a hobbyist or any of the other means uh, that the lionfish got here but through their breeding habits and the niche that they use for and where they breed just probably isn't going to work for them here in Florida what, whatever I mean so um, they are a beautiful fish um, and I added one because they're a Caribbean fish, of course. And I've got this one back uh, January 7th of 2015. And I know it's January 7th because it was the... You could see him in my quarantine video. He's one of the fish being quarantined. And that, that video was done on January 7th of 2015. And he's been a great fish, beautiful fish, uh, very pretty coloration. The the um, royal gramas they sometimes the uh, in fact when you first introduce them they'll go into hiding and and they'll come out to eat and they're very skittish and they stay very close to the holes that they feel comfortable with and even after a year or so and they start coming out on a regular basis there was a there was a time a year or so ago that he disappeared. I can't remember if uh, my tank was down because of a hurricane or whatever, but when I got it back up again, I didn't lose anything, but I do have stories to tell. I won't tell now, but uh, of my tank going through several hurricanes and losing power. But uh, the, uh, the Royal Grama, he disappeared. I didn't see him. I looked everywhere for weeks. I bet you three weeks went by and then he shows up again. So they have this thing about uh, being real skittish and hiding. But once he came back, uh, he's been out. He used to stay uh, for over a year or so. He used to stay very close within inches of his, of his uh, place of comfort. Uh, but now you see him, he's all over my tank. He Right now he's on the by the frog spawn and that's quite a distance from the place he sleeps which is on the main uh, the main reef I got on the, over by the Manapura but that's a delightful fish um, some people have trouble keeping them but I, like, like I said he's been around for for a few years now in the past year I would say about a year ago I picked up the uh, the blenny this lawnmower blenny. Occasionally I lose fish because they jump the tank, which is a, a kind of a problem. It was one of the reasons why I had that fish trap video made was because I had that coarse wrasse 
that uh, chased everything until it jumped. So I've had a lot of fish losses, not from disease, but fish losses uh, previous to the fish trap video. Fish losses to my fish jumping. And um, I think what I really need to do now is get a cover on my ends and uh, get that done. But anyway, I've had this blending now since for over a year. For about, yeah, for about a year, I should say. And I love blennies. Uh, they may not be the most colorful fish, but they sure do have the personality. And they're a wonderful fish. They're definitely, a, every beginner uh, who's just starting in the hobby should start out with a, with a blenny. Uh, they have so much personality. Uh, you're going to want to name them. I don't name my fish, but... I think anybody who's just starting out and gets their first fish, uh, they won't have trouble giving a blenny a name because they just—they're uh, like pets. They're more like—they're more like pets than any other uh, fish, I believe, that I can think of right off. But because uh, they interact, I mean, they not only do they have the personality, but they interact with you and they'll be comfortable with you and. And they they'll do silly things and antics around the tank. And then recently, uh, in fact, it's just been March of 2017. So just a couple months ago, I got this big eyed squirrel fish, and he's doing fine. But I can see that uh, they <laughs> he needs to be fed well. And uh, I would imagine like uh, like a lionfish or something that have a, the larger mouths that they probably would be sucking up smaller fish if you have any smaller fish so I'd be careful if you got one of these but what I do is I've been feeding him uh, well he, he's been eating frozen foods but what I'll do is I'll get a, a ball of uh, frozen uh, you know a cube of frozen blood worms and he does like mice and shrimp and all that but he really likes the blood worms and, and sometimes if I can get the to kind of defrost the ball but before it completely you know dissociates uh get it in the tank and he'll suck the whole ball down and uh, he really likes that so i i got this fish uh in fact i got this fish from the hackies as well it was just a couple months ago like i said in march but um i really didn't plan on it and when it comes to things like aquascaping and the fish that go in the tank, I I prefer the plan because all the years of my fish keeping I didn't plan, and now I I like the plan, and so I do have plans for like a blue tang and some other fish. But I didn't plan on this uh, big eyed squirrel fish, which I you know I, I'm saying this is an aquarium. This aquarium is a a, um, a Caribbean. Uh, tank but this uh, looking at this big eye squirrel fish to me I would my guess would be he's Hawaiian uh, but squirrel fish are all over the planet it could have come from anywhere but looking at the particular the, the white fin tips and the coloration he has uh, he's probably a Hawaiian uh, squirrel fish uh, and the big eye squirrel fish we have here are very close and very similar looking. So I went ahead and said, okay, I've seen them in the in the Caribbean. Maybe not this particular species, but very close and definitely in the same family. And so I went ahead and and, and, and didn't really plan on it, but I like the fact that the add some red. I wanted to get some red in the tank. Um, and uh, he's been a good addition so far. So we'll see how he does. And let's see. Did I get everything? Cardinal fish, the Royal Grama, the Rock Beauty, the Florida Rass, the Big Eye Squirrel Fish, and the Blenny. So that's the fish I have. And I, the tank, people come and say, boy, you don't have many fish. I mean, uh, until they start to look. There's more fish in there than you realize. But there really isn't that many, actually. We're talking six fish um so i do plan on uh, getting some more uh but before i add some more in um i definitely want a tang uh for sure 
Uh, but we'll see what I collect. And uh, other than the tang, I need to think about what other additions I'd like to have in there. But I do realize that I don't have a lot of reef because I like the open spaces. And so um, there should be a limit to how many fish. At least I know the rock beauty is going to want to limit to how many fish I put in there. And so then, of course, um, keeping the, the number of fish down uh, also keeps the bio load down and keeps maintenance down. And so, of course, it keeps feeding down. And, you know, so if in my case where I want to stay low maintenance because I'm not here during the week in all, uh, at all times, uh, you know, the. And I just, even if I was, I do like to keep a low maintenance tank if at all possible. You know, if you do this for more than a decade, anything you could do to keep it down, uh, keep the workload down of, of water changes and all that kind of thing, which you know from my water change video, I don't want to do too many of those. Um, so, uh, having a, you know, under 10 fish in the tank is is preferable you know once you get up to 15 20 and and I know people you look at the tanks they have 30 even 40 fish and they're having to do a lot of feeding and they're having to do a lot of uh, skimming for sure and any any other kind of maintenance to keep that keep that bottle load but so the activity in the tank uh, fish activity is is limited I would love to have some other kind of invertebrates uh, for example uh, shrimp but with the wrasse and some of the other fish I have I, I really can't put I, I couldn't put shrimp in here anymore um, although it's something I can collect the other thing I had for years uh, uh, talking about invertebrates I had uh, sea cucumbers because I collect them, I mean, right here in the area where I live, I can go out and collect them. And even brackish water, aquamate them here to my salt water. And uh, I had a number of for years that they did a wonderful job of sifting through my uh, sand, you know, the bottom of my tank. Now they'll just suck up all the, the silt and detritus on the bottom of your tank and out comes beautiful white sand out the other end. It's kind of gross and funny and wonderful <laughs> but uh, that's what I have for fish and I thought I'd just uh, give a few give you a little bit of why I I select the fish I have and and what my plans are in the future for that so hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you next time